Hey, I'm Anirvante, a tutor from Memphis Kim University, and today's lesson is of the utmost importance since we are going over the fundamental theorem of calculus. This part of FTC allows us to take the derivative of integrals. So what does it say? Well, let's say we have a function f of x that is continuous on the closed interval a comma b. Then for all x in the open interval a comma b, we can define another function that is the integral of f of t from a to that x. And if we take a derivative of this new function that is defined as an integral, the result is simply f of x. Basically, FTC says that if you take an integral and an immediate derivative afterwards, they will cancel each other out. In other words, to take the derivative of a function defined as an integral, we are going to ignore our bottom constant a completely. And we are going to take the upper limit variable x and plug it into the integrand function of f of t, so we will just get f of x. A few things to keep in mind before our examples. First, in order to use FTC, the constant a has to be the lower limit and the variable x has to be the upper limit. Also, later on, we're going to be dealing with some harder derivatives where the upper limit isn't simply an x, but a function g of x. For these questions, we will still plug in our upper limit into our integrand f of t, so we will get f of g of x. But since we are dealing with an inside function here, we have to employ the chain rule, so we have to multiply at the end g prime of x. So our final derivative will be f of g of x times g prime of x. We will be taking these three derivatives for the first three examples of our video. And then we will apply FTC and harder questions that involve taking a derivative of a function defined as an integral. But enough chit chat, let's use FTC to take derivatives of integrals. For our first fundamental theorem of calculus example, we are going to take the derivative of the integral of t cubed from 2 to x. Actually, let's first choose not to use FTC, and instead let's take an antiderivative of t cubed, even if the upper limit of our integral is the variable x. Antiderivative of t cubed is t to the fourth over four, and now we need to plug in the upper limit and the lower limit. So we will get x to the fourth over four minus two to the fourth over four, which is the same thing as x to the fourth over four minus four. The derivative of this parenthetical will be 4x cubed over 4 by the power rule and the fact that the derivative of minus 4 is 0. And our answer fully simplifies to be x cubed. But the intended and easiest way to solve this question is by using the fundamental theorem of calculus, which says in order to take a derivative of a function defined as an integral, all you do is take your upper limit of x and plug it in for t inside the integrand, and we can completely ignore the bottom limit constant. So to find our answer, we just replace our t cubed with x cubed. As you can see, this is one of the easiest questions from calculus, as we barely had to do any work, since the derivative and the integral essentially canceled out. Let's try a slightly harder example that will require the chain rule. To use FTC to take the derivative of the integral of sine of t from 4 to x to the 4th, we are going to plug in x to the 4th into sine of t. So our derivative starts with sine, but instead of t, it will be sine of x to the 4th. And since our inside function is x to the fourth and not just x, we have to use the chain rule. So we have to multiply by the derivative of x to the fourth, which is 4x cubed. And thus, our final answer is sine of x to the fourth times 4x cubed. So this example was only slightly harder than our first one as long as we remembered the chain rule. Our third example is similar to the previous one, but it involves one more step at the beginning. Notice that ln of x is the bottom limit and not the upper limit of our integral. So before using FTC, we have to use this integral property, which says that if we want to switch the limits of the integral, we have to negate the integral. Using this property, we thus negate our integral so that ln of x can become the upper limit instead of the lower limit. Since our variable is now in the upper limit, we can use FTC and plug ln of x into our integrand of t minus two. So our derivative starts with our minus sign from your previous flip. And we plug ln of x into t minus two. But, like in our last example, we have to use the chain rule. But don't chain too early, as some might mistakenly put the derivative right next to ln of x. Instead, like usual for the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of ln of x, which is 1 over x, at the very end of our derivative expression. So our final answer is negative ln x minus 2 times 1 over x. Hopefully you can see that these derivatives of integrals are pretty easy as long as you remember the chain rule. Now let's use FTC in questions that involve more than just a derivative. So we're going to try to find this limit. And like with most limits, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule, which says that if the limit of the numerator and the limit of the denominator of our function are both zero, then the limit of their ratio is the same as the limit of the ratio of their derivatives. 
Notice that for our numerator, which is our integral, its limit can be found to be zero, as we can plug two into our x, which resides in the upper limit of our integral. And we will have an integral from four to four, which is zero, as there is no area between four and four. And now to check the denominator of two x minus four, we plug in two into the denominator, so its limit will be two times two minus four, which is also zero. So now we can employ L'Hopital's rule. Let's take the derivative of the denominator first, since the derivative of two x minus four is just two. And since our numerator is an integral, we have to use FTC to take its derivative. So like our previous examples, we will take our top limit of two x and plug it into our function of t squared plus one. So we will have two x squared plus one, and don't forget to include these parentheses. And also don't forget to apply the chain rule, so we will multiply by two at the end of our derivative. Now that we have gotten rid of our integral, let's finish our limit by plugging in two for x. And two times two is four, and four squared plus one is 17. And these twos cancel, so our final answer is 17. So FTC comes to the rescue anytime we are taking a derivative of a function defined as an integral, like while using L'Hopital's rule. For our last example, we are going to see where this function defined as an integral is decreasing. Remember that a function is decreasing when f prime is negative. Thus, we should try to take the derivative. And since our function is defined as an integral, we are going to use FTC one last time to take this derivative. So we are going to plug in x into our integrand function of t squared minus t minus 2. So f prime of x will just be x squared minus x minus 2. Now we should factor this derivative since we want to see where it is negative, and we get f prime is x minus 2 times x plus 1. The zeros of f prime are thus negative 1 and 2. f prime is also positive and has 1, 2 factors, so it is even. So f prime will be a parabola that goes through the points negative 1 and 2. Since f is decreasing when f prime is negative, we want to focus on where our sign chart of f prime is below the x-axis. And it looks like our answer will be from negative 1 to 2. Now hopefully you know when and how to use the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus to take the derivative of integrals. We also have videos on the other half of the fundamental theorem of calculus, so subscribe and check those out. Until then, have a nice day!